This is kind of a weird study. It's weird, but it, it's telling. Uh, and, and these four guys, uh, six obese males, before and after three weeks of total caloric restriction, and I mean total caloric restriction, they fasted for three weeks, had water and only, uh, lost an average of 10.8 kilograms, which is a lot of weight. And, they, uh, and then when they did this test, they drank 150 cc's of a suspension of corn oil. <laughs> And, and they, they did this, and you can see on the top, this is before and after food restriction, you can see the little line across the top, they got IV glucose. And they wanted to have IV glucose to see what effect the glucose would have without it having the incretin effect. So they gave them IV glucose. And what you can see is uh, on the, the top of the glucose, uh, of course, the IV glucose is the highest. And then the next is the oral fat. And then they, or, I mean, the IV glucose plus oral fat. And then at the bottom is the oral fat, which shouldn't stimulate any glucose response. The insulin response. The highest one now is the IV glucose and oral fat. And this is what you find in the incretin response is that when you mix fat and sugar, you get a lot of insulin. And it makes you think that maybe in olden times, people didn't eat a lot of mixed meals. And if you try to think of a food that you can find in nature that's high in both fat and glucose, fat and sugar, it's hard to find one. It's either one or the other. Uh, but that runs it up. And you can also see what it did with the GIP. And you can see on the right-hand side, after food restriction, and they had lost all this weight, everything uh, moderated. I mean, they've got disrupted metabolism on the left side. 